Hi, Steven here from Core Electronics. In this video, I'm going to show you how to assemble the Move Mini by Kittronic. The Move Mini is a nice little robot, and it's great for classrooms or learning to program um, where things move around. It uses the servos for motors, and it's just a little bit of assembly, so we've created this guide to make it easier on you. So the first step to assemble the Move Mini is to take the servo light board, which is the brains of the Move Mini. It can, well, not the brains, but it's what allows the servos to work. And for the kit, we're going to need a micro bit. Micro bit doesn't come with the kit. And we're gonna just attach the micro bit to the servo light board. Be sure to insert the spacer between the micro bit and the servo light board. It's good practice to get every screw started before tightening any one down, because if you tighten one down all the way first, it may cause the board to, to seat at an angle, which will make it more difficult to put the rest of your screws in. The screws don't need to be very tight, just snug. This board isn't gonna be any un under any sort of mechanical load. The screws are just to make the electrical connection between the micro bit and the servo light board. Now that that's connected, we'll get our servos. And you'll take the parts out of the, the bags that come with the servos. There's gonna be a bunch of, um, there's gonna be a bunch of lug plates. Um, we're gonna use the circular one and there'll be some two long screws and two short screws with each one. Now I've already, I've already done the next step, which is to take the circular lug plate that goes onto the top of the servo and screw it into the wheels using the long, uh, the long screws. You'll notice that the screw sticks out behind, uh, beyond the lug a little bit, that's normal. So once those are screwed on, we'll just press them in place onto the servo We're not gonna screw them on at this time because the because first we need to calibrate our servos. So the servos connect to these this three pin connector on the back of the servo light board with the brown wire facing up. If the um, LED lights are up, then the brown wire will face that side. Then we'll open up make code um, for micro bit. And just to, just to do a calibration of our servos. So next we're going to open up make code on our computer. And with make code open and our micro bit connected, which we can still access the USB port at the top of the micro bit. We're going to go to advanced and pins, and here we can find our servo pins. Uh, but first we're going to go to input, get a button A pressed block, go back to pins, and then we're going to use a servo right. Um, well, we're gonna use two servo right blocks, one for each servo. And the servo is connected to P1 and P2. P0 on the servo light board goes to the, um, the five LEDs. So we're going to change the servo right pins to P1 and P0. And how a servo works is, uh, continuous servo works is if you say one, if you send 180 to it, then it'll go full speed one way. If you send zero, it'll go full speed the other way. So if you send 90, whoops, if you send 90, then it will stay still. So I'm just going to download this to the board. It looks like the transfer has been complete. On the servo light board, I'm gonna turn it on, and then I'm gonna press the button A to send that signal to a servo. So see, now one of our servos is spinning, which means that the, the center point needs to be calibrated. So at the bottom of every servo, there's a little screw next to the wires and taking your screwdriver, we're just gonna turn that. So when the servos are commanded to be at zero, so not moving, 
we're gonna turn this screw slowly until, oops, until the servo stops moving. So now we have our center point calibrated, um, and this will ensure that the that the bot moves in a straight line once it's going and doesn't just um, move side to side or spin in circles when you tell it to be stopped. So we'll turn that back off and take the servos back out. Um, we'll come back to those wheels later. The next step is to Take this small, um, small piece, and we're going to connect our servos together. Now, most of the kits at this time have an additional page to explain this step, since this part was added in later. Um, so we will, when we mount the servos, the 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 um, drive shaft on the servo is going to be up away from the bottom plate. So the this um, this connector plate will go on the side that's closest to the drive shaft. So we're just going to feed the wires through the hole. And rest the servos side by side. In our kit of hardware, We're going to use two short screws and two nuts to fasten in this panel. So just drop the nut in place and put the screw through the hole on the servo and screw it in. Once that's done, we're going to pull the wires straight back toward the, the little, um, the wider part in this bracket. And we're going to take the bottom plate, which looks like this and we're going to set the servos in place. So there's a small notch for the servos and they'll snap down into position. And hold in firmly. This side with the, the wide notch in it, it will be the front of the bot and the side with the circle will be the back and we want this little panel to overhang toward the back. The next step is to put our side panels in place, or our structural side panels, which are these two. And a little word of advice, something that I found when putting this together is something that will make it easier for you, is to take a little bit of tape, and we'll just take a look at which side these go on. But I'll take a little tape and just put this, put it on the inside over where the, the screw and the nut is going to go on these panels. And we'll get to why we're doing that later. But we'll fit these panels in place with the notch facing the front and the circle toward the back. And then we'll take this um, Center panel, which will go over the servos, it has a curved side that will go toward the back. And we'll put it in place between these two panels. And it'll just hold in place for now until we have some screws. So this is why we put the tape there. To make this a lot easier to assemble, um, we need to now put in our nuts to attach these side panels. Oops. There we go, got stuck to the tape. Um, we need to put these nuts in to attach the side panels. And with that tape there, we can drop the nut into the slot and it'll stay in position without needing to both hold the nut and hold, um, and hold the bot together, which is becomes kind of a three-handed operation really fast. So we're just going to screw this in 
don't tighten it down very tight right now. Leave it pretty loose, but um, just tight enough to stay in position. We'll do the other side. And again, just tight enough to stay in place. Leave it pretty loose. And then we can take these two pieces of tape off that we put in there to hold that nut in place. Next, we're going to attach our two sidewall panels. So this will be the green one and kind of the, the white decorative side panel that goes around the wheel. So starting on whichever side you like, put the green panel in place with the white one over top of it. And then we will, starting with the back, slide our nut down into position and then feed, our, feed one of the long screws through and thread it in. Something I found is that in order for this to sit, this back bolt to sit flush into the panel, we need to press in these um, structural inner panels so that uh, the nut can kind of sit inside of them slightly, which is why we le left them loose up until this step. But we can tighten this one down a bit more, and then we're going to do the same with the front panel. Now, if you'd like, you can put some tape on the bottom side or on the top side of this, this bottom panel to hold the nut in place, or you can use your finger, set the nut in position, and feed the screw through. Now that we've finished this side, I'm going to tighten down the screw on the bottom and tighten down the two side screws. Next, we're going to repeat this on the other side. All right, so I have put the other side on. Next, we're going to put the wheels in place. And using the small screws that came in the servo bags, screw them in position. If you start spinning the servo, then, um, then you've tightened the screw enough. You really don't want to manually turn these servos any more than you have to, because it can be bad for the gearing. All right, so now our wheels are on the buggy. It's time to mount the micro bit and servo light in position. So if we take a look at the back, we can see which wire goes to which side. We're gonna take that wire and plug it into the same side on the back of the servo light board. Again, with the brown wire facing up. And then we're going to fit the wires to either side um, of the center center structure, so next to the green panels, and put the servo light board underneath the lip on the top of the frame, and then push the bottom into place. Then this last little front bumper piece just rests down in that front slot to keep the micro bit from kicking back out. So you notice now that we might have a bit of extra wire. We just tuck that in between the two spaces. So it's out of the way. And there we have it. Our move mini is complete. We can program it now by connecting it to make code. And one of the really nice things about the Move Mini is that you can control it 
um, with some custom extensions. So if we go to extensions and then type in servo light with a colon, we'll get the Kittronic servo light plugin. And this adds a new section of blocks like drive forward, drive backwards, turn left, turn right, etc., that are made specifically to control the um, the Move Mini, and they're quite intuitive to use. Um, there's also a calibrate turn speed and calibrate forward speed, which are pretty essential for setting up how much it turns when you tell it to turn left and right, because it may turn more than 90 degrees by default. But that's how that's how you set up the Move Mini um, for Kiptronic. Let's do just a quick little example sketch. We'll unplug the cord, turn it on. There we have it. Thanks for watching.